Hey, John Martinez here, and today we are going to talk about negotiating. Actually, to be more specific, we are going to talk about renegotiating. So, the reason for this is because, you know what, the truth of the matter is sometimes we just get our numbers wrong, right? I mean, sometimes we, we, we don't have any buyers for a house at a certain price, or something happens where we just need to... We need a lower price, right? All kinds of things can happen where we need to go back to a seller, a seller whose house we've already contracted, and find a way to get that recontracted but at a lower number. It's just part of the business. It, it happens, right? It, it does. If you're buying any houses at all, it's going to happen to you. And when it does, here's the news, it absolutely sucks. Uh, nobody wants to go and renegotiate a deal. It's like firing someone, right? It just, it doesn't feel good. No one looks forward to it. We all try to avoid it. Um, the bottom line is when we have to do it, right? Sometimes we just got to do it. Sometimes when we have to do it, we actually, we even goof it up a little bit. We might not get the deal. Um, you know what? We might get it done and then make some enemies in the process or, or really upset some people in the process, which could... Uh, not only stinks when you're doing it, but could also cause some problems down the line in the deal as well. You know, it's, it's just part of the business and we just have to know how to do it, right? We got to know how to do it effectively. And hey, if we can do it effectively and do it without making anyone mad, well, that's, that's just a bonus, right? So I'm going to go ahead and today's training is going to be on renegotiation. So if you ever have or if you think you might ever need to renegotiate anything at all, then this training is probably for you. So I'm going to slide into a, a, a training uh, I actually did a few months back. I'm going to go ahead and, and, and I'm going to insert it here uh, in the slide deck and play that video for you. And the reason is this. We got some pretty massive results. So since I did the video, I've probably had no less than a dozen people reach out to me uh, all saying, hey, I use this process. You were right. No one got upset. Uh, in fact, it was the opposite. They thanked us and we all got somewhere between 10 and in one case, $30,000 off, uh, off the price of a home, all without getting anyone mad or uh, upsetting anyone during the process. So because it's getting massive results, I'm going to go ahead and just replay that video for you because, hey, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? So I'll sign off now, play the video for you, and I'll catch you on the back side of it. See you in a moment. I threw this together real quick because I get the same question really often about renegotiation, right? You go out, you make an offer on a property, uh, something's uncovered later, it's going to take more money, more work, more time than you were originally imagined, and now you've got to go and talk to the home seller uh, about your offer. You need more money out of the deal to cover these extra expenses you, you didn't uh, expect, right? So we've been able to get some, really do some monster renegotiations, um, oftentimes getting even more off the deal than we, we needed or wanted to ask for. Uh, that was actually volunteered by the seller. So how did we do this? I want to give you some renegotiation quick tips, okay? Uh, to, to help you guys when you have to go back out to a property and, and or, or just talk to a seller and renegotiate a deal. So that's what this is all about. So let's jump into it real quick. Okay. Like I said, I threw this together on the fly here because I just had this question come in again tonight. You might hear my kids in the background. It's dinner time. Uh, but bear with me and, and, and this will this will help you out if you need to renegotiate. Okay. Number one, the first thing we're gonna do is go not okay. Okay, what does that mean? And let me highlight it for you. Going not okay. We're going to have to put on our acting hat. Maybe not. What that means is this, guys. When you get out there and you give bad news, how is that going to make your prospect feel? They're probably going to be sad, maybe angry, maybe upset at you. And if your prospect is angry, upset, any of those not okay feelings, then any discussion after that is going to be really, really difficult. So how do we get your, your prospect, your seller, to not feel bad? There's only one way. We have to feel worse than they do. Okay, this is a quick lesson on empathy. You guys ever have those horrible days where you, you have a pity party and you think life sucks and you think, 
work stinks and, and you have it harder than everyone else and then you see a family, an individual, uh, someone who has it much worse than you do and all of a sudden you feel great about your situation, right? Because compared to them, it makes you feel really good and all of a sudden you snap out of that pity party and you uh, feel good again, right? That's empathy. So we use that to our advantage here. So we put on our acting hat, and most of you won't have to put on an acting hat, right? Because this is how you're going to feel. You feel terrible. But when you talk to your prospect first, in order to prevent them from freaking out, you've got to go very not okay first. So what that means is you've got to get physically, visibly uncomfortable, okay? That means you've got to really get, uh, you know, you need to be reluctant to, to give in the bad news. You need to take the blame for the bad news. You need to apologize. Uh, and here's what that all sounds like. Hey, listen, Gary, I, I got some news I've got to share with you. I've, I really have been fretting about this. I, I, I don't know how to share it with you. Um, I, I've been agonizing over this, actually. I, I feel absolutely terrible. Um, I'm, I'm not even sure how to get into the, what the right way to get into this conversation is, but um, I, I've got a challenge. I've got a little bit of bad news. Um, geez, I feel horrible. Uh, do I have permission to, to, to share this with you, right? So most of you are going to be really uncomfortable. The news here is don't hide it, okay? Don't hide that discomfort. Let it show because when you're that uncomfortable, here's what happens when you break the news. They're going to probably console you. Instead of freaking out and going, I can't believe this. Why didn't you know this? How, you're just trying to take advantage of me. What will happen is this. They go, no, listen, it's not your fault. It's okay. And most times, nine out of ten times, they're going to console you instead of freaking out. So first thing you do is you go very not okay. You've got to be more uncomfortable, more not okay than your prospect's going to be. This will avoid them from freaking out, and they'll actually console you when it works well. Again, we've had many investors and people in other industries do this. It works amazingly well. So that's step one. Take 100% of the blame. Listen, this is my fault. This is stuff that I, I, I should have seen or I should have known or I, I, I feel absolutely horrible. Next, here's what we do. We let them out of the deal. What we want is after we make sure they're not going to blow up on us, we make sure they console us then we are going to evoke the fear of loss, right? So in their heads, their property, it's done. It's a done deal. It's behind them. They've already moved on. They're already envisioning the next step in their life. And when we take that away, they're going to experience a huge fear of loss. We fight to hold on to what we've got. We fight two to three times harder to hold on to what we've got or what we've accomplished than to getting something new. So here's what you do. You don't even go for a renegotiation. You let them out of the deal. It sounds something like this. Hey, listen, so based on what we saw, there's a lot of foundation work. It's going to cost somewhere between twenty and $40,000. And here, here's the deal. If, if I buy the house at the price we agreed on, I'm going to lose my butt on it. And I know that you're not going to take a penny less than, than what we agreed on. So, you know, my gut's telling me I, I just need to back out of this thing and, and, and just, just let you go. Um, you know, it's, I know you're not going to take anything less. So I feel like I just need to, to let, you out of this, let you out of this contract, let you out of this arrangement. And because uh, there's, there's nothing I can do. I, I, I can't buy the house for the, the price that we originally agreed on. Okay, we tell them we don't that that they don't want to continue. We go hard for the no. We say you're not going to want to continue because, and then we're gonna we're gonna let our numbers slip out. So hey, listen, I, I know you're not going to want to continue because we we agreed on 150. Knowing what I know now, I'm not going to be able to pay a penny more than 120, 125 for the house, and even at that price, I'm not exactly sure what's gonna if if I'll make or lose money, um, or even break even. So. I, I don't even want to ask you to go down that low. I just, I, I know you don't want to, and I respect you, and I'm not going to ask you to. I just, you know, my, maybe it's just best that 
this is where it ends. Here's what we do. At this point, we just shut up. We go silent, we sit back, we wait patiently for our prospect to offer a solution. We put this problem on their lap and now we let them solve it, okay? Some of the, the investors we work with don't even offer that price. They wait for the prospect to say, well, could you do 120? And that's how they're getting uh, even bigger concessions than they wanted. They leave the, the, the problem on the prospect's lap and say, you know, I, I've got to pay much less to, for this to make sense. I can't, so I, I, I just need to let you, let, let you go. And then they shut up and they sit back. And that fear of loss kicks in and the prospect says something like, could you do it if I took 120? And that's how we're getting even bigger concessions, okay? Uh, if, if they don't offer a solution to a problem, we can solution the offer or offer the solution by using uh, in the form of takeaway. Something like, listen, my gut's, my gut's telling me right now that no matter what I could offer you, you probably wouldn't consider taking even a dollar less than the 150. Again, sit back and relax. See what they say. If there's any wiggle room, they'll say something like, well, you know, there's a little room there, or I don't know, we can see what we can do. And then you're right back into the renegotiation. So guys, there's your quick tips, okay? Take full responsibility, go very negative, let them rescue you, rescue you, then get out of the deal, slip your number in there, or don't slip your number in there, put the problem on their lap, sit back, go silent. It might be a very long silence. They might be distressed, but let them offer a solution. If they offered a solution, you're in good hands. If they don't, if they say, well, sounds like we need to, we need to just stop here, See if they take even a dollar less. See if there's any wiggle room at all. My gut tells me no matter what I could offer you, even if it was just a dollar less, you probably wouldn't consider still doing a deal with me, would you? And their answer right there is going to tell you if there's any wiggle room in this thing at all. Okay? So, fear of loss, psychological reactance, going very not okay and using empathy on our side. That's how you renegotiate monster deals. Get bigger concessions than than you even wanted. Guys, this takes guts, but this is what the top salespeople in the world do. This is what the top salespeople in your industry do. Okay? So I know it takes guts. I know some of us aren't going to have the guts to do it, but that's how, that's how it gets done. So hey guys, I'm back. John Martinez here. Video's over. What do you think? Do you think that tactic could come in handy? Do you want to find out, right? Do you want to put it into play? Well, I suggest you do if you've got anything to renegotiate because, again, uh, we've got investors from all over the country who have used it, called in, said, hey, it worked just like you said on the video. So I invite you to use the same tactics and techniques if you ever find yourself in a situation where you need to renegotiate as well. This is the 21-Day REI Sales Challenge. My name's John Martinez. Absolute pleasure being with y'all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.